Good morning, everyone. We are going to get started with this morning's program. We are pleased that you are able to join us here on the historic campus of Morgan State University as we celebrate our sesquicentennial year. And we look forward to today's very special program where we will commemorate the life and legacy of the Honorable Verda Freeman. Welcome. Good morning again. On this Saturday, March 18th, the 77th day of our sesquicentennial year here at Morgan State University, marking the 110th birthday of our nation's first African-American female state senator, the Honorable Verda Freeman, welcome. I have the distinct honor of presiding over this special program on today. I am Dale Glenwood Green, a professor here in the School of Architecture at Morgan State University, and also the Vice Chair of the Maryland Commission on African American History and Culture. And it is indeed my honor to preside over this joint ceremony of the Morgan State University and the Maryland Commission on African American History and Culture as we celebrate and commemorate the life and legacy of Verda Freeman Welcome, and as we rededicate the Verda Welcome Bridge. I will now call upon Dr. Bernie J. Hollis, who will bring official greetings on behalf of the Sesquicentennial Celebration Coordinating Committee. And as he comes, Dr. Hollis was a student here when the university celebrated its centennial. He chaired the university's 125th anniversary, and he is our distinguished chair of the Sesquicentennial Committee, Dr. Hollis. Thank you, I think. I have been here forever and enjoyed every minute of it. To all our distinguished guests here, to the Freeman family, to the Welcome family, um, ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> it gives me great pleasure to greet you on what I will call a great day at Morgan State University and to welcome you to yet another activity in our sesquicentennial celebration. <clears throat> Excuse me. Our celebration began in December of 2016 with a worship service at the Sharp Street Memorial United Methodist Church, the place of our founding, and it will extend to December 2017 to our winter commencement exercise here on the campus, at which time we will send forth yet another class of Morgan graduates who are the embodiment of the vision, the dreams, and the purpose that guided our founding back in 1867. In between those two dates, Morgan will offer a great variety of activities extending throughout the year, reaffirming our evolving purpose, tracing our steady progress over the years, and affirming our promise to grow the future and lead the world. That is the theme of our celebration, purpose, progress, promise. And this activity today is one of the real high points of this celebration. Let me say a few words about the sesquicentennial, and I promise I will be relatively brief and get you out of here at least in the next couple of hours. <laughs> uh, my comments will not be a couple of hours, however. <laughs> Our sesquicentennial celebration commemorates the remarkable journey on which this institution embarked 150 years ago. It's a journey that has led Morgan to an equally remarkable success today. It started as a passion in the hearts, a vision in the mind's eyes, and the audacity of hope in the souls of black folk who were former slaves in Maryland, and long before emancipation became Methodist preachers who were committed to the moral and intellectual elevation of their race through education. With the assistance of their white Methodist church counterparts, they had, who had the resources and commitment to make their dream a reality. They were able to make a modest beginning with nine male students gathered for the first time for class on April 30th, 1867, in the lecture hall in the basement of Sharp Street Methodist Church. Given the times and the place, this was an extraordinary undertaking, and the institution that they helped to found has been extraordinary ever since. 
I speak from the vantage point of a Morgan graduate and a very proud Morgan graduate and know how extraordinary this institution has been. In fact, one of the enduring and endearing legacies of Morgan State University is that it has always been a place where ordinary people come and go on to do extraordinary things. That is our history, and that is remarkable in and of itself. From the Centenary Biblical Institute in 1867, to Morgan College in 1890, to Morgan State College in 1939, to Morgan State University in 1975, and now to the Morgan State University of 2017, a Carnegie classified doctoral research university, one of the nation's premier HBCUs, a major producer of African American degree holders in many disciplines and at every level, the only institution in the nation whose entire campus has been declared a national treasure by the National Trust for Historic Preservation. and an institution that just last December awarded a degree to its 50,000th graduate. That's when you applaud. <laughs> this is the Morgan for which the vision and hard work of our forefathers and our antecedents were the seedbed. And during our sesquicentennial celebration, we commemorate the contributions that they and all who succeeded them, trustees, regents, presidents, administrative leaders, faculty, students, alumni, supporters, and you have made to the building of this great university. So we are pleased to welcome you to our sesquicentennial celebration and invite you to join us in activities throughout the calendar year as we tell the Morgan story and celebrate our extraordinary legacy. I'm coming to the end now. Today we gather for that very purpose to celebrate the Morgan legacy and to honor a Morgan legend. This is a day on which you will hear the word welcome repeatedly. Not just because we're glad to have you here with us, but we are, but because we have gathered to celebrate the life and legacy of a great lady named Welcome. Verda Freeman Welcome, 1939 graduate of Morgan College, distinguished state legislator and community activist, pioneer in American politics, and we are here in her honor once again by rededicating Morgan's Welcome Bridge to her. If I might recast the words of Abraham Lincoln at his Gettysburg Address, I would say that it is altogether fitting and proper that we should do this, and that we here at Morgan once again, today, consecrate and hallow the ground on which she once walked as a student, and the place which she sought, fought so valiantly to elevate from the status of college to the status of university. And so we are very pleased today to partner with the Maryland Commission on African American History and Culture in this ceremony to rededicate the Verda F. Welcome Bridge at Morgan State University and to unveil an exhibit in her honor. So once again, I welcome you to this great day at Morgan State University and to our sesquicentennial celebration. I bring you greetings from the Maryland Commission on African American History and Culture. As Professor Green said, we are serve as a chair and he serves as my partner and also my vice chair. To all of the distinguished guests here on today, I would like to thank you for coming. If you could kind of see what I see from my vantage point, you will be amazed. So give yourselves a round of applause for joining us on today. On today, you will hear over and over again a lot of stories about Dr. Uh, Verda Welcome. She made many accomplishments, but my role today is to share her relationship with the commission. She wrote the legislation for the establishment of the Maryland Commission on African American History and Culture in 1969, and was assisted by noted Morgan State University professor of history Dr. Benjamin Quarles. This heroic and heroic act also gave rise to the establishment of our statewide African American Museum, the Banneker Douglas Museum, which uh, 
came into being in 1984. Since then, the Maryland Commission on African American History and Culture remains committed to discovering, documenting, presenting, collecting, and promoting lives and legacies such as the Honorable Senator Welcome to Maryland's African American heritage. The Maryland Commission on African American History and Culture also provides technical assistance to institutions and groups with similar objectives. Through the accomplishment of this mission, the Commission seeks to educate Maryland citizens and uh, visitors to the state about the significance of the African American experience. As I end my greetings, we didn't just do this, you know, all by ourselves. It took a multitude of people, and I want to take a moment to thank them. To our planning committee, the chairs, Com uh, Commissioner Edwin Johnson and Commissioner Janet Sims Wood. To the Deltas, other organizations, exhibit curators, exhibit designers, plaque designers, graphic artists, publications designers, the wax figure curator, the documentary story uh, des uh, quilt designer, and the quilters, hostesses, uh, contributors, and donors. To Miss Mary Sue, welcome, and other family members and friends of the Honorable uh, Verda, welcome. We cannot thank you enough for the dedication and the tireless support the Maryland Commission on African American History and Culture Leaders acknowledge and appreciate your hard work and contrib your contributions that you made for the success of this historic day. Please stand and be recognized. So everybody that supported this event in any way, Thank you again. As we celebrate with each other and share fond memories on this special day, we must never forget the life and legacy of Senator Verda Freedom Welcome. She gave us a good foundation. It's on our watch now, and we must continue the journey. Let us stand, everybody, and applaud Senator Verda Welcome for the many accomplishments that she made during her lifetime. Thank you. This morning, we are here to celebrate, recognize, and honor the achievements of a woman who was a teacher, mentor, advocate, agitator, politician, trailblazer, and a Morganite. Ms. Verda Freeman, welcome. When I arrived at Morgan for graduate school in 2002, I, like hundreds of students, thought the name Welcome Bridge meant Welcome to Morgan. Today, we are here and prepared to educate everyone on the story of Senator Verda, Welcome, Free, Senator Verda Freeman Welcome. Senator Welcome was born in my home state in Lake Floor, North Carolina, on this day in 1907. Her parents taught her to treat everyone fairly and modeled for Verda a noble work ethic. At the age of 19, Welcome studied to become a teacher, securing employment with the segregated Baltimore City school system. During her teaching career, she observed the impact and justice, discrimination, and inequality had on African-American children in particular, and the African-American community at large. In 1936, Welcome married Dr. Henry C. Welcome, they had one daughter, Mary Sue Welcome. In 1939, she completed a Bachelor of Science degree from Morgan State College and a Master's degree from New York University in 1943. Welcome's political career started in 1946 when she was elected president of the Northwest Improvement Association in Baltimore. As a neighborhood association president, she had to petition for changes from elected public officials. It was at this point she realized that becoming an elected official would give her greater capacity to allocate resources 
beyond her local region while writing and endorsing legislation that would benefit others. As a result, the 1958 welcome campaign for Baltimore's fourth district state delegate seat in Maryland. After winning the election, she vowed to represent all the people in her district and alleviate racial and class divisions. Her record advocated for gun and smoking laws, public accommodations for the blind, legalizing interracial marriages and ending welfare recipient harassment. In 1962, she campaigned for the Maryland State Senate. This proved a difficult challenge for Welcome because of the adverse response to her gender and race. Verda was not discouraged. She was a Morganite. She fought hard and won, making history as the first African-American woman in the nation to hold a state Senate seat. During her 20 years in the state Senate, Welcome advocated for her alma mater by sponsoring legislation which elevated Morgan to university status in 1975 and securing state funding to erect a footbridge over Cold Spring Lane to connect the north and south sides of campus in 1964. For that reason, we are here today to rededicate the most revered landmark on campus the Verda Freedom Welcome Bridge, and to share her impact on the Baltimore community, the state of Maryland, and her role in the 150-year journey of Morgan State University. Good morning. I bring you greetings on behalf of Congressman Cummings. The Congressman submitted this letter in recognition of this glorious occasion today. Dear friends, I am writing to extend greetings to Morgan State University and the Maryland Commission on African American History and Culture on the occasion of the rededication of the Morgan State University Welcome Bridge and the commemoration of the life and legacy of the Honorable Verda Friedman Welcome. Senator Welcome was a voice for the voiceless. I am pleased to join with you in paying tribute to her many outstanding accomplishments and for all that she did to transform lives, especially those of us who are the underserved. Senator Welcome was a trailblazer and a woman of many contributions to humanity. She was a strong advocate for equal rights and justice for all people. Her life was a reflection of her commitment to education and civil rights. She was an active participant in the community, an educator, a legislator, a member of Delta Sigma Theta sorority, and a friend and mentor to countless individuals. This event highlights the importance of our continued support for Morgan State University, the organizations that work to preserve our history and culture, and the individuals who give selflessly of their time and talents to uplift others and make our world a better place. Thank all of you for your leadership and tireless public servants. Sincerely, Elijah E. Cummings, member of Congress. Yes, I am a Howard man. And I think there are a couple of Howard folks here as well because we have a, a relationship that goes beyond sports and academic competition, but uh, trail, both schools trace back 150 years. It's the 150th uh, year anniversary for both Morgan State University and Howard University. And I'm always proud and happy to come to Morgan, despite my past pedigree of Howard. Thank you, Professor Green. Um, it, it is great to be here. I love coming to Morgan, and particularly today to participate in the honoring, honoring the life and legacy of Verda Freeman. Welcome. You know, March is Women's History Month, not only here in Maryland, but across the country. And just last week, uh, Professor Green and I were, along with the governor, had the opportunity on Harriet Tubman Day to participate in the groundbreaking and the opening of the new Harriet Tubman Underground Railroad State Park and Visitor Center in Dorchester County. And I will, thank you. I didn't pay him. Okay. I was gonna put a plug in for saying that you should go and visit the um, the, the visitor center and the park, it is extraordinary and it's truly a jewel 
in Maryland and on Maryland's eastern shore. It was an honor to be there with Harriet Tubman's descendants to honor her incredible life and ensure that the new generations have an opportunity to learn about and to honor one of our truly incredible Maryland heroes. And today, with this rededication ceremony, we are ensuring that for years to come, Marylanders will be reminded of the many contributions of another great Maryland woman. Berta welcomes impact on our state transcends race and gender, but speaks as someone who is very proud to be Lieutenant Governor of this state, I can always say, and I can say truly, that Verda Friedman Welcome helped to pave the way for the rest of us, and particularly myself. She became the first black woman in the nation to serve in a state legislator, legislature as a state senator, and after being elected in 1962, she continued to work hard for all Marylanders. During her time in public office, she fought against discrimination, advocated for equal pay, for equal work, for, as was mentioned, university status for this great university, and reforms to the correctional system, the state's correctional system and facilities, as well as pushing for the creation of the Maryland Commission on African American History and Culture. And these are just a few of her long list of legislative accomplishments. As a state, we owe a great deal to a strong, leading woman like Verda Welcome. Thank you again for including me in today's wonderful tribute uh, to rededicate the Welcome Bridge, adding plaques and a documentary story quilt to the commemoration of her life. Um, I have to say also, in visiting Morgan when I was an undergrad, I thought Welcome Bridge meant welcome. So, so. So thank you again. Now I have um, a couple of citations that I'd like to uh, give, give out, out now. now. Uh, we'll go to my sister. First, I'd like to ask Mr. Wilson to come up. I don't think any of this was in the script, so I'm going off the wall. But I'm going to commemorate, first of all, and it's not necessarily in an order of importance, the 150th anniversary of Morgan. Uh, so I wanted to present this governor's citation at states, Morgan State University, greetings. Be it known that on behalf of the citizens of this state, in recognition of a well-deserved tribute to Morgan State University as our citizens honor the founding of this historically black and highly respected academic institution, and as the people of Maryland in expressing our congratulations and best wishes for a very successful and memorable 150th anniversary celebration, we are pleased to confer upon you this governor's citation, signed this day, Lawrence J. Hogan, Jr. Governor, me, and John Wilbur, the Secretary of State. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, uh, Lieutenant Governor, thank you very much. I'm going to ask the chair of our board, the Honorable Kwaisi Mfumi. I think I saw another board member uh, Regent Winston Wilkerson to come forward and officially accept this uh, with me on behalf of Morgan State University. If there are other members of the Board of Regents, would you please come forward? And another uh, citation for the commission uh, for this celebration of the 110th birthday of the Honorable Verda Wel Freeman Welcome. Uh, the Maryland governors, governor of the state of Maryland to the Maryland, Maryland Commission of African American, American History and Culture, Culture greetings be it known that on behalf of the citizens of this state, in recognition of your successful efforts to commemorate the 110th birthday of the Honorable Verda Friedman Welcome, and to celebrate her life, leadership, and historical accomplishments as the first African American woman 
in our nation to be elected state senate seat to a state senate seat and as the people of Maryland join together in expressing our lasting gratitude to a distinguished and beloved Marylander, we are pleased to confer upon you this governor's citation signed this day, Orange J. Hogan, Jr., Floyd Rutherford, Lieutenant Governor, John C. Robinson, Secretary of State. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor. We'll now ask that our Chairman of the Morgan State University Board of Regents, the Honorable Kwasi Nfume, former Congressman and former head of the NAACP, and also one of Verda's boys, would actually join us at the podium. Thank you very much. It was an honor to be called one of Verda's boys. I'm going to tell you how that happened and what it means in just a moment. I want to thank uh, Lieutenant Governor Boyd uh, personally and professionally for all that he has done for this university in the time that he's been in office. It's one of the better kept secrets around, but he has advocated on behalf of our needs. He's been on our campus. He's met our students. Uh, and He's interacted with us as much as you can coming from a sister institution that's always been competitive. But we, we really appreciate that. And I just want to say it on the record publicly. Thank you very, very much. <laughs> Dr. Wilson, thank you for organizing uh, the people who then organized the sesquicentennial. Uh, they've done a great job. They really, really have. My thanks to you and, and on behalf of the board, our collective thanks. Um, to the distinguished faculty who've come out today and alumni and friends of the university, we say welcome to you also. And uh, I want to particularly thank uh, Dr. Bernie Hollis, uh, Dr. Green, and Dr. Edwin Johnson who have worked so hard on sesquicentennial events that we see the fruits of their work. Uh, we don't always get a chance to see the labor, but they labor very hard. And this is just one of many things that are happening throughout the year, as Dr. Wilson, I'm sure, will talk to you about, that commemorate uh, the birth and the legacy of this institution. Um, it's a special honor for me today because 39 years ago this month, Berta Welcome invited me into her home. And I had a chance to sit in her living room, sip some tea, meet with Dr. Welcome, her husband, uh, and have an experience, for me at least, that kind of set for me the path that I was to take. If Verda Welcome had never done that, trust me, I would have never gotten elected. Verda didn't know who I was from anything else, but she heard about this young guy that's running around, and he's out of school, and he's got all these Morgan classmates. And he's talking about running for city council. And uh, to her credit, she brought me in and talked to me about what I wanted to do and what I should do and what I needed to do uh, to be victorious. Uh, and let me just say this. Verda, excuse me if I say Verda sometimes, because she gave me that permission many, many years ago, 39. But Senator Welcome had such grace and 
poise, poise and, and distinction and etiquette, and she had a presence about her that wherever she went, you kind of sensed there was something different and special about this lady, and there really, really, really was. Uh, I see Delegate Nathaniel Oakes in the back. He remembers those early days. I was looking to see if I saw a photo in here, but didn't see one. Um, but Nat remembers what it was like in those days. And Baltimore was divided in a lot of political clubs. You know, you had uh, the 40th District Club, which was uh, Senator Welcome's club. You had Metro Democrats, which was Little Willie Adams' club. You had the 41st group, which was uptown. Um, and I, I decided that I was going to uh, run for office without asking anybody, without talking to anybody. You know how you are when you're young and rambunctious. I just said, it's my time. Um, and I developed this campaign slogan and just put it on posters that said, beat the bosses. Well, that was interesting because the district that I was running in, there were only two organizations that controlled things. It was Little Willie Adams's and it was Verder's. So when Verder brought me into the living room, she said, now, young man, tell me, who are the bosses you want to beat? I said, oh, ma'am, not you, not you, Senator, not you, not you. And uh, Willie Adams asked me that also. I said, not you, not you, Mr. Adams, not you. Uh, but it was so funny, and she said, look, I trust you, I have spent hours with you, I feel you, and I want to support you, even though nobody else was supporting you. No one, I kid you not, no one, um, other than my pastor. And, and Verda worked with me and caused me to understand what it meant to be in a leadership role. So because of her stewardship, of the legislative process, because of her leadership throughout the state of Maryland, and because of her friendship that she willingly gave to so many people like myself, this is a very special moment, particularly here on her 110th birthday. Um, I was looking through this uh, brochure, which is very well put together. Now, I had not seen this picture before. Verda was to kill in this picture. She got a fur wrapped around her, and woo, man. Uh, and it's interesting to go back and look at these pics because, you know, this picture of her and uh, JFK, this was actually 1960. He came back after he got elected and spoke in Baltimore in 1962 with the 5th Regiment Armory. And he wanted to make sure one person was there among all the others. Did you invite Verda Welcome? You know, and that's, that's, that's very, very poignant and key because in those days, he didn't have to do any of that. But Verda was there, along with Louis Goldstein, who introduced him that night. I'm looking at uh, this picture of her and uh, Pete Rawlings, the late Pete Rawlings, the late Troy Braley, and the late Olin Moyd. Uh, this was the ticket that I remember her putting me on that year that caused me to uh, end up being victorious. Now, when you win, as I did, the closest election in the history of the state of Maryland in that year, in 1979, the following year, was by three votes. And my grandmother said to me, boy, as long as you are black, you just remember that was the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. <laughs> and I remember. <laughs> so, happy birthday, Verda. Uh, you know, Verda knew that she just tolerated me. That's the only way I can say it. And she knew that I was absolutely smitten by her daughter, Mary, who was here with us. Actually, smitten was too mild a word. I was head over heels about Mary. Mm, mm, mm. That's another story. <laughs> so good to see you. Right. We'll keep the rest of it. So what did we say about the Honorable Verda Freeman Welcome? on this her birthday, and on this the rededication of the bridge named in her honor, and this on the campus that she loved so very, very much. I think we have to say that Verda Welcome was a stalwart in the storm, that she stood steady and steadfast through it all, and that no matter how long the journey, cold the chill, fierce the enemy, or few the friends, she found a way to capture our will to dare to be different, and then she challenged us to dare to make a difference. She found some of us 
long ago on life's dusty mantle of whatnots. And she picked us up and lifted us high and dusted us off and told us and reminded us that we could be somebody someday. Verda took the towering as well as the tiny, those who had been too often looked over and left out. And so it was then in many respects what Verda Welcome did for many of us that we are able to stand here today on her 110th birthday, capable, competent, qualified, and prepared. Happy birthday, Verda. Uh, good afternoon. You know, when you follow Kwaisi and Fumi, you can just say, enough said, and go and sit down, right? Uh, and so uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chair, for uh, really taking us down memory lane uh, in terms of your own personal experience with Senator Welcome, uh, as well as what she meant for the great history and legacy of Morgan State University. And so um, I will be brief in my remarks. I'm not going to uh, recapitulate uh, the great history of Senator Welcome, that's in your program, and you've heard it from previous speakers. Uh, but um, I do want to start by acknowledging, as always, uh, the presence of our Lieutenant Governor, uh, Boyd Rutherford, uh, as the Chair of the Board. Uh, uh, as indicated, um, the, the Lieutenant Governor has worked very, very effectively with us since he's been in office to marshal some of our projects and some of our priorities. And he is working behind the scenes. He's here on campus quite often and I want to publicly acknowledge your support and your leadership. Uh, I also want to acknowledge uh, Senator Nathaniel Oates. Uh, he, of course, has been appointed a state senator now uh, from the House of Delegates, and I saw him here earlier uh, in front of me, and so uh, Senator Oates, if you would stand and be recognized as one of our great supporters as well. Now, like Dr. Corbett uh, and also um, Chairman Fumi indicated and others, uh, when I arrived here uh, in July of 2010, uh, I felt the same way about the Welcome Bridge. And I said, this is so incredible that an institution can have a bridge officially welcoming the students. And so then as I began to have conversations with Morgan alums, I realized that there was something in our lore called bridgeology. And I couldn't exactly understand bridgeology, but they gave me a fast lesson on what that was. And a lot of things happened on the bridge that I would not repeat, including things that led to an incredible number of Morgan marriages. But, um, Cheryl Hitchcock, much to her credit, uh, she took me aside and she said, now, uh, Mr. President, uh, you know, if you're going to really be the president of our glorious and historic Morgan, you, know, you got to go in and read all of our history. And so, sure enough, I went and I pulled everything that I could possibly read. And I began to read this incredible story of Senator Bertolt. And I just could not let go of every piece of information that was put before me. And it gave new meaning to my visits to Annapolis. And so almost every time that I go to Annapolis and I go inside of the Miller Senate office building, I make my way up to the second floor and I spend a little time in front of the incredible portrait of Senator Berta Welcome. I want to officially acknowledge how much of a trailblazer she had been in the maturation of this institution. And then when I stay there for my two seconds, I'm then ready to go and see whomever I'm there to see because I know that I have that wind at my back. And so I want you to know that this institution started in 1867. And as you've heard, we went from 1867 until 1890 as the Centenary Biblical Institute. And then we went from 1890 to 1939 as Morgan College. And then 1939, Morgan State College. I'm sorry, 1975. But in 1975, it was because of the legislation 
that was introduced and supported by Senator Welcome that enabled Morgan State University to offer graduate degrees and to become a university. And so as a result of that, we offered our first PhD in 1979. That would never, ever have happened without the support and the vision of Senator Welcome. And so I'm standing here today to say to her in spirit that what you birthed in 1975 that gave rise initially to one doctoral degree has since given rise to 16 doctoral programs, has since given rise to nearly 50 master's degree programs, that has since given rise to nearly 1,500 graduate students, and that has since given rise to the Carnegie Corporation for the Advancement of Teaching, naming Morgan State University a national research university. That is simply remarkable. And as I bring my remarks to a close, I often say to the people on our team that I've studied the way institutions grow, the way colleges and universities become even more significant as they pierce into the future than they were in the past. And what I've learned is that um, it takes almost like um, a relay race type of look at leadership. Uh, that along the way, individuals at various points in an era of an institution are given a torch. They're given a baton. And they have to understand that they are on the clock. And they have to run their leg of the race faster swifter, with more vision than the individuals who had the baton before them. And then when you understand that, and you understand how to pass that baton on to the next person or the next generation, an institution never ceases to grow, to prosper, and to be relevant. And so when you go back to 1867, those founders started the race, and they were given their batons, and they ran that leg well, and they handed it off in 1890, and they ran it well, and they handed it off in 1939, and they ran it well, and they handed it off in 1975, and they ran it well with the great stewardship of Senator Welcome and the torch is being handed off again. And it is in our hands, and it is our responsibility to make sure that this leg of the race that has been handed to us is run swiftly, with vision, with vigor, and with direction. And so I want to also publicly announce along this journey and, and publicly appreciate the fact that there have been many elected officials in our state uh, who have helped to run that leg well. And so, of course, Senator Berta, welcome one of those. But I also want to hold up Senator DeBlount, Sen uh, uh, Delegate Pete Rawlings, and, of course, Senator John Carter Conway, uh, who is there now uh, working with the Lieutenant Governor, working with the board, working with us to continue this great legacy. And so I want all students and others who are here uh, to understand that when you walk across the Welcome Bridge, you are walking across not just a passageway, but you're walking across a great symbol. And it is a symbol that connects the historic portion of our university, the historic quad, to the mall and the West Campus and the future. So all those buildings in our quad, they're legacy buildings. The bridge 
connects these two things, the past with the present, with the present. And it is because of that that we honor today one of the true, true visionaries in elected politics in this state, a Morgan alumni, Senator DeVerta Freeman. Welcome. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Uh, to distinguished guests, to the family and friends of the Honorable Verda Welcome, I am very, very pleased to be a part of this very, very special, special day. Uh, as the Chief Academic Officer here at Morgan, uh, we represent excellence. We represent making a difference. We represent service to our community. That's what we're about at Morgan. And this is also what Senator Verda Welcome was about. Excellence, service, and dedication. Just think for a moment about being born on a small farm in North Carolina. Just think about that. Think about that environment. That environment was the foundation for her to grow and excel. I didn't know her, but I would venture to say that she probably never, ever forgot about that environment from whence she came. And for all of us, those environments are important because they feed the future, they feed our enthusiasm for moving forward. She, from what I have read, was an extraordinary woman. An extraordinary woman. And it's not always easy for women. We think it's 2017, women have it made. Well, that's not quite true. And you know if it's not quite true for today, what she went through in her career, she had many, many struggles. It was not easy. And so we lift her up today. We lift up all her accomplishments, but we lift up her courage. Again, think about the courage that she had to do what she did. As a chief academic officer, I represent the academic mission of the institution, our faculty, our staff, and most importantly, our students. So this day is important for our students. And I know we have some students here, but more and more students will begin to understand the legacy of Senator Verda Welcome. And they will say, and they will think, if she did it, guess what? So can I. So I applaud you for being here. I'm very thankful to be a part of this wonderful historic day, and I look forward to the unveiling and the celebration of Verda Welcome. Thank you. Good morning. I am Kayla Nate Lawrence, a senior here at the illustrious Morgan State University, where I proudly serve as Miss Morgan State University for the 2016-2017 academic school year. I bring you greetings on behalf of the Student Government Association, led by President Joy Griffin and Vice President Nadeef Bracey. 
What an honor it is to stand before you all today as a representation of my university and the students who attend this national treasure to honor such a revolutionary woman, the Honorable Verda, Verda Freeman Welcome. A woman who was the epitome of selfless service, who not only advocated for constituents of the state of Maryland, but utilized her platform and her voice to advocate for her university. It is because of the footprints she imprinted in the, stand, in the sand that we, the Student Government Association, uphold the importance of advocating for students on our campus and instill the importance of ensuring that the student body joins us in ensuring our university is held to the prestige it rightfully deserves. It is no accident that we are gathered here today during Women's History Month to celebrate the legacy of such an impactful woman in the history of Morgan State University. And as we rededicate the Welcome Bridge today, the Student Government Association vows to ensure that students who cross the bridge understand the power that lies within the name of one of the many pivotal landmarks on this campus, the Welcome Bridge. I proudly crossed that bridge during the freshman Promethean Walk in 2013, but in May of 2017, I will walk across that bridge with purpose because I understand the history of such an honorable woman. So today, I thank you for allowing us, the student body, and I am a representation of them, to join you in rededicating the Verda Welcome Bridge. Thank you. Good afternoon. I am here to talk about the Grand Lady. Will all the Deltas in the house please stand? How about that? And I want to let you know that when the Honorable Roberta welcomed all of these ladies were with her, they went with her. We painted Annapolis red. And we have been painting it red ever since. If they didn't know, know who Delta Sigma Theta was, they know who we are now. <laughs> Very well. And that's what's missing here today. She was a politician, but she was a lot of fun. We loved her and we supported her in all of her ventures. Many of them have been listed today. But the one that I like to think about was when she made them create on the Baltimore Police, Baltimore City Police, a lieutenant for women. Now, I had a very different speech that I was going to give you. But as I began to listen to everybody else, they said it all. So I'm here to let you know that she was a personable person, a lovable person, one that you could sit down and you could tell her anything, and she had something to give you to take back with you. We loved her, we honored her, and we supported her each and every day. And we are pleased to be here to say happy birthday. Happy 110th birthday. We love you. We love Sue, who I worked with as president of our chapter. And it's just, this is just a glorious morning. I know no other way to say it. It's a glorious morning. And Verda, this is your morning. Thank you. God is good. She lives. She lives. Dr. Wilson, you had a vision a couple of years ago, and you shared it with me. And, you know, I told you then during a meeting that mother did not need recognition. She didn't do, she didn't carry on her life because she wanted recognition. 
You said that she deserved it. You didn't tell me what you were going to do. But you said you had a vision. And thanks to you, that vision has become a reality today. Lieutenant Governor, queasy, quasi, he didn't tell you that in that living room, my father wanted to know what kind of name is that. <laughs> you know, he was, he was a straight shooter, just, just like mother. I have had the, the privilege of meeting so many persons who uh, participated in this event to make it what it is today. And I know that it, it's going to be impossible for me to name everyone, but you know who you are, and I will see you at the reception in phase two. And I hope that many of you will go to the reception because you have a great, great surprise in store. Absolutely amazing. If you think this is special, wait until you see um, the, the second part of this event. I know things about my mother that nobody else knows. And perhaps there are a couple of things that I need to share with you. She was not known for her culinary skills. She couldn't cook worth a darn. She was a disciplinarian. And being a precocious child that I have been said to be, and some even say that I'm a precocious grand, you know, adult as well. But she knew that just talking to me was not enough. So she had the famous hairbrush. And I, when I did wrong, which happened sometimes, she would go into the bathroom, sit on the commode, her throne, and call me in. And I would have to voluntarily get across her lap and receive the blows of love. Now, the question of whether or not it worked, it's up for debate. But it couldn't have been all bad, because Berta did it. And there are some people that say that it might have worked in steering me in the right direction. Mother, it, when you go upstairs, you'll see a picture of her graduation from Coppin. When you look at that picture, I want you to find her. She will be the only person. Everyone else is looking out. My mother is looking this way. When she was growing up, she thought she was ugly. She's gorgeous. But she thought she was ugly. So therefore, whenever the picture was taken, she always just gave me the profile. And there will be several pictures of her like that. And then as, you, as the years go by, there was a transition. Now, Sarah and, and also others have said she didn't forget where she came from, that farm. She didn't forget it, and she didn't want me to forget it either, because she sent me back every year until I was about 13 or 14. And my grandfather, and of course, you know, in those days, all the, kid, the children had two names because it's not enough when you're out in the fields to call Verda. It becomes Verda May, and, and the sound just resonates all through the, 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 the field. Well, I was Mary Sue. Mary Sue! And it reverberated. But I went back early in the morning. The first thing we did, and I'm not so sure those, it was a small farm. It was a lot of acres. We started picking okra first thing in the morning. Okra, the dew falls on okra. It's wet 
you have to put socks on your hands, you put gloves, but it still soaks through. But okra was the first thing that we picked in the morning. And then we went on to the watermelon and the cantaloupes and all the other things that my grandfather grew on his farm. He would load up all of the, his produce, take it to Asheville, which is like about 45 miles away from the, the hills and the community of Lake Lure. But he would stay and sell his produce from the trucks. And when it when done, he, he would come back home. And I, could, I can assure you that that was a good reason for my mother trying to get out of North Carolina. <laughs> Going in those fields was no fun. And my grandfather, and this, I guess this creep also helped mother to become the humble person that she is. She grew up on a farm that had no running water, that had no plumbing. My father was considered wealthy because he had an outhouse. And he, with the, you know, with the Sears Roebuck catalog and Montgomery Ward pages for, for paper, but that was where she, that was, <laughs> that was humbling. And, and she, again, she never forgot it. Things have changed a lot. But the teachings of my, grandf of my grandfather, her father, Papa, and all the children that he had, most people said the more children he had, the more free labor he had, because from the time you were three or four years old, you were out doing something on that farm. So we all, all of the children, the 15 children, and then he had a couple more after his, his first wife died. He married someone else and had a couple more. But all of those children received strength and the humbleness that comes from having a large, loving family. So when my mother escaped, she came and began her life. My father, and we, we, he was so special. He loved his palace. He loved his palace. And she loved him. They were Pally and Pally. And he loved, he loved me. He was, he was also special. So I, as we, mother is who she is, what she is, but she could not have done it without daddy. So as you remember her, certainly I want you to remember daddy. Now daddy did have, he has a, um, a relative here, and I want to acknowledge the fact that I did, I did have some relatives that came in from North Carolina, my sister Verda's children, Stan, Stan, and her, and her children. My father's nephew, Henry. I have to tell you, as I mentioned my father, my father was an immigrant. Immigrant. From Honduras. And I, I, while I was collecting items, I found his, his uh, immigration papers. So it, it's, he came and became a doctor. It's really wonderful that those borders were not closed. <laughs> but let me, uh, because we have so much more, my mother, if she were here today, would say she appreciated all that you're doing, but she would be thanking you. So as her daughter, I stand before you on this, her birthday, to thank you. 
Thank you for recognizing that Verda Welton had something to offer. Thank you for recognizing that she had a talent. Thank you for supporting her as she went through her life's journey. During the good times and the hard times, those times when, when someone tried to kill her because she wanted to serve. I was a student, a sophomore in college at, at Morgan. When late one night, we were probably doing some kind of mischief, when we got a call that said, number one, your mother is okay, but she's been shot. But your prayers got her through that. Your support got her through that. When Daddy died, and he died probably, he was only a few years older than I am right now. So he was young. And there were times when we wondered whether or not my mother would make it. I think that was her most vulnerable time. But you got her through that. Because you prayed for her, you called her, and you let her know you cared. So thank you for caring. Members of the committee, Linda, Janet, as I went through Mother's Collections, finding things that you might want to, to use in this exhibit, I had no idea that you would be able to do all that you did. I gave you items. But through this event, you gave Bertha Welcome a personality. Because there's so many people who, who knew her as the political figure, who knew her as being stronger than the strong. But you, as you go through this exhibit, you gave her a personality. When people walk across the bridge, it's not just a name. It's not just a woman who left North Carolina and came and gave so much of her life to the service of her, her people and the community. But there was a woman, a lovely, caring personality that went with that, and you captured it, and all the things that, that you have said and done, and those things that you will see as well. She would say thank you to those who allowed her to be a mentor. You know, we all can say, hey, I've got something to give, but unless you are ready to receive it, it doesn't make any difference. You allowed her to mentor Joan Gaither. You allowed Lisa Williams, people, so many. And I know if I ask you to raise your hands, a lot of hands would go up. You allowed her to share her life with you. You were receptive, and you were appreciative, which kept her going, which motivated her that she could do more and more and more. So <laughs> Let us thank Ms. Welcome one more time. Ms. Welcome, we're so honored. And President Wilson, don't go back to your seat yet. If President Wilson will join me at the podium with Ms. Welcome, we're going to turn to a very special and meaningful section in our program where we will have an official ribbon cutting and we want to call upon the Lieutenant Governor as well, Chairman Infume, Regent Wilkinson, to join us here with Mrs. Welcome. And I'm going to call on the assistance of Ms. Angela Gaither-Scott and Commissioner Donna Cypress, who will assist with the ribbon as well as the large scissors. So if we get prepared, and if I can have President Wilson and Lieutenant Governor stand in this vicinity, Chairman Fumé, is welcome. 
those persons who serve with our ribbons. We hope that it will This is good. This is good. Okay. Take a chance. Make a pathway. Chip away at those things that block the serenity of, the, of, of our lives, that keep us from having the true dignity that we are to enjoy. <laughs> to be the beginning of the day. As many of you are aware, we were not able to do this out at the bridge due to the weather, but we thought that it would still be appropriate to bring the ribbon cutting ceremony inside in honor of rededicating the Honorable Alberta Welcome Bridge. And so in the spirit of that, if we want to count down, five, four, three, two, one. Ladies and gentlemen, we have now cut the ribbon for the official rededication of the Verda Welcome Bridge and ceremony. We will continue in the same spirit. And I will ask that President Wilson, who will be assisted by Ms. Kim McCullough, who is our Associate Vice President of the Design and Construction Management, will now have an official unveiling of the Honorable Verda Welcome Bridge rendering. And we'll do another countdown for this very special unveiling. Five, four, three, two, one. I'm going to ask that President Wilson share some brief details about this bridge. Actually, um, we have come up with a new rendering for the Berta Welcome Bridge, and this rendering will bring the bridge uh, in conformity with our legacy bridge that stretches across Hill and East Coast Spring. Uh, I do want to express my appreciation to Ms. Kim McCallum. Uh, and the uh, wonderful planners and architects that we have at the university uh, who actually, with much input, uh, have put forth this particular rendering, and we will be working in the coming months in the next couple of years uh, to make this a reality. And so uh, I'm not sure if there's much more that uh, we can share about this, uh, other than the fact that uh, we are really on a quest here at Oregon uh, to make sure that we don't have many of our hidden treasures uh, who will remain hidden. Uh, and so this is bringing one of them back to our attention with you know, some real verbiage about what that means. And I think some of the verbiage will be on the plaque that we will uh, unveil a little bit later, and they will be at the foot of the bridge. So as soon as the others then begin to enter the bridge, you will know a little bit more about your mother and our leader. And uh, let me just say, uh, I may not have the phone again, uh, the microphone's on March the 29th uh, at 2 o'clock in this space. Uh, we will also bring alive again uh, another hidden treasure here at Gordon, uh, Ms. Anolia McMillan. March 30th, March 30th at 2 p.m. Um, and in this space, we're going to be a permanent exhibit honoring her as one of this state and this nation. Uh, most incredible civil rights icon. Uh, so, March 30th, 2 p.m. for the next ceremony, bringing yet to our attention again a hidden treasure of Morgan State University. Thank you, Dr. Wilson. We will now turn to the unveiling of the plaques that will be installed at the appropriate time at the bridge. And I'm going to ask that President Wilson and Chairman and Kume, along with our Lieutenant Governor, will join me on this side as I call upon our very special donors. We were very honored to receive a significant, two very significant donations from well, uh, Chairman and Kume to the left of the uh, plaque there. President Wilson, if you'd stand by. Chairman and Kume, the first one will be there. And Lieutenant Governor, if you'd stand by, Miss Welcome. And Regent Wilkinson, if you join Chairman Nkume and President Wilson on that side. I want to 
introduce the two donors for our first plaque. Mr. Wayden Wenberg, class of 1994, and his wife, Mrs. Annette C. Wedderburn, class of 1992. If you would join President Wilson and Chairman Fumay, Regent Wilkinson, and our Lieutenant Governor, along with Ms. Mary Welcome. And your plaque is here, and we will do a countdown on the unveiling of your plaque. And we thank you for your most generous donation towards this effort. Mr. Weinberg, the countdown. Are we ready? Five, four, three, two, one. And so now for everyone that will travel across the Honorable Bird and Welcome Bridge, both its north end and its south end will feature bronze plaques that will be installed at either end of the bridge. And they will re-honor the Honorable Bird and Welcome. They have her date of 1907 to 1990, Morgan State College class 1939, and brief history of her legacy from 1962 to 1975 leading up to the Morgan State University status. And so we are very grateful for Mr. and Mrs. Wedenberg, class of 92 and 94, for their most generous donation, making these plaques available to the north end, which is the academic quad side of our bridge. And they were the first donors to come to the table, and we are very appreciative of their donation. Thank you. I will now call upon our second donors, and we will unveil the second plaque, which will be erected at the south end of the bridge, which is the Morgan Commons area. And so I'm going to call upon Ms. Debbie Tajani, who is the Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated Eastern Region Maryland State Coordinator, who will be joined by Ms. Sarah Howe Smalling, who is the past president of the Baltimore Alumni Chapter of the Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. And I'm sure you all understand that I cannot invite all the Deltas up around the plaque. <laughs> and so we'll have President Wilson, Chairman and Pume, Regent Wilkinson also joining here on the even a sub. Okay, this is good. Come out a little bit. Okay, great. Are we ready for the countdown? Five, four, three, two, one. This plaque has been so generously sponsored by the Maryland Council of Deltas of the Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. And so again, we are most pleased and honored to have accepted this donation on behalf of the Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. And this plaque will be installed at the appropriate time at the south end of the bridge, which will mark the Morgan Commons area. So again, a special thank you to the Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. Thank you, Chairman Infume, President Wilson, Lieutenant Governor, Ms. Welcome, and Regent Wilkinson. As we close, as Ms. Welcome has said, this phase of our program, and we turn to the celebratory reception, we will ask that the Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated and the respective members close us in their song of We've Got Delta Power as we lead and process out to the third floor terrace where this reception uh, for the Honorable Bird and Welcome will continue, where we will have the unveiling of the traveling exhibition, the wax figure from the Great Blacks and Wax Museum, the story quote that has been produced by the committee and Dr. Joan Gaither, as well as a special tribute. And so without any further ado, the members of the Delta Sigma Theta Sorority will close us out in a procession to the reception with the We Got Delta Power. Care who we see or who we be. We don't have to run, don't have to hide. 
Cause we got something burning deep inside. Hey, 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 we got Delta power. And it's the greatest power of them all. Hey, 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 we got Delta power. And together we can fall. Hey, 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 sometimes we're up, sometimes we're down. Our feet are always on the ground. Hey, hey, hey! Smile, frown, we Delta Sigma Theta band.